Another set of challenges, eh, Mr. Middleditch? Yes, I'm sure I can. Still, it's what's kept us going all those years, isn't it? What is? Well, the thought that come what may, we'll always be there for the people of Elsenby. Oh, yes, indeed. Good morning, Matron. Morning. Hey, just saying, Matron. Ken, about this lamp. Ah. How long is it since I asked you to change it? Oh, must be a few days, Matron. Weeks, more like. Alan. What? The police reckon by the look of the skid marks. He was just going too fast. Cut through a fence and smashed into a tree. Check his pulse, will you please, staff? Hello? Can you hear us? Oh, the pupils are equal and reactive. He's obviously concussed. Fast and thready. All right. Check his blood pressure, will you please? David? You haven't got surgery this morning, have you? No. Can you take over here? I'm already late for mine. Sure. Thanks. What's his name? Good question. Alf Ventris. I've got an operation with Mr Rose. Ah, oh, Mr Ventris. We weren't expecting you till this afternoon. I got here good and early, so I could uh, get settled in. Won't get your operation done any sooner, I'm afraid. Mr Rose isn't doing it till tomorrow. Oh, that's all right. I'm in no rush. So, which is mine? This way, please. Good morning, Gordon. It is now. Certainly wasn't earlier. Oh, I'm sorry. I came across a motor accident on my way in this morning. Uh -huh. Luckily, the chap hadn't lost any blood, because if he had... I... Tea, matron? I've just missed some. Oh, thank you. Our immediate care kit is here in the hospital. I couldn't put up a drip. I couldn't give him any fluids. Obviously. As you know, I think it would be much better if all of us doctors had our own kit in our cars. I'm sure it would, Gordon, but that would cost money. Yes, I understand that. All I'm saying is that we all need to understand that somehow this needs to be seriously dealt with in the future. Yes, I'll give it some thought. You haven't told him yet. Good. My name's Dr. Cherison. And yours is? Don't worry. We'll get you sorted out. Customer for me? No, road traffic accident. Anything serious? Hopefully, just cuts, bruises, and a broken ankle. Got off lightly, then. Um, Organise some skull actors, will you, nurse? And warn Sister Bridget. Only trouble is the poor chap can't remember his name. What, no driving licence, chequebook, that sort of thing? No. Police are tracing the car registration. Shouldn't take too long. Hmm. Good. Oh! I hear you're moving into a flat in the nurse's home. Yes, yeah, stroke of luck. The ground floor one happened to be free. Lucky chap. Wouldn't have happened in my day. I expect not. Well, make the most of it, that's all I can say. We'll be there for long. You ready for the flat warming then? Yes, I think so. I told everyone to bring a bottle. Oh, what about glasses? We invited practically the whole hospital. Oh. Yeah. And food? Got to give them something to nibble on. Will I? <laughs> You're hopeless. Thanks. Do you want me to come round early and give you a hand? Could you? Do you have a tight chest at the moment? A bit. Sometimes it feels really tight. 
Pretty thin. Do you think he's making a fuss about nothing? No doubt. And in again. No doubt. It's really frightening when I get a bad attack. Yes, I know. I think you may have asthma, Simon. Well, can't you give him something for it? What about one of those inhalers? No, 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 no. I don't want to give him anything until he's had his chest x-rayed. Right. OK. Give this to Lizzie on reception. She'll sort it out, and I'll see you again afterwards. Yeah. Cheerio. Oh, no, you don't. Mm. I'm sorry. No smoking on my ward. Well, what am I going to do? Take this opportunity to give up. It's a dirty, rotten, filthy habit. If men were meant to smoke, they'd have chimneys fitted to the top of their heads. Harsh, sister. Very harsh. Mr. Rose, if you wish to smoke your pipe, regrettably, I can't stop you. Patients, however, are a different matter. And how are you? Oh, very well in myself. Mm -hmm. And the um, protrusion? Oh, it's as painful as ever. Right, sister. Unveil, please. Oh, my goodness. What a corker. I'd forgotten. Who'd be a bobby, eh? Well, never fear. We'll soon lop it off. The bunion man. Not the whole foot. Farrell, we lights are up. They certainly are. Man's fallen off a ladder, landed on a coal frame. Got glass embedded in his arm. Here's the address. Thank you. And the kit. Well... Dr. Ormod and Dr. Cheriton aren't free. Oh, good. They're going to be so jealous when they realise I use this first. <laughs> what it did to be a pioneer. Good luck. Come on, I'll take you to school. I'm not going. Why not? It's the rugby, isn't it? I hate rugby. It's the trials, Simon. What's the matter with you? I don't like rugby. Don't get anywhere in life by avoiding things. I like school. You know I do. I just... I hate sport. It's good for you. Life is full of knocks, Simon. You've got to learn to take them. I can take them. And why are you arguing? I just don't like being forced into doing things I hate. I'm not going. Simon! Come back. Let me go. No, no, not until you agree to do as you are told. Let me go. No. Simon. Simon. Come on. Oh, come on, son. Come here. Oh, thank God. He's in a terrible state. Simon? What's wrong? Can't breathe. Can't breathe. It's all right. This is trying to relax. I'm to listen to your chest. Okay. I need a paper bag. You what? It's okay. Perfect. Okay, Simon. I'm going to put this bag over your nose and mouth. All I need you to do is breathe. Please, trust me. Simon, do as the doctor says. Alan! I'm here. Tee up, lad. Oh, so you found one then? Yeah, found a lot more besides. Such as? Come and have a look at this. Paint. Blinking heck. There must be enough here to paint the fourth bridge. Good. Well done. I think we'd better admit him. Looks to me like your damn well should have done that earlier this morning. This gentleman's had a car accident. Oh, dear. He's broken a couple of ribs and an ankle, and he's a bit woozy. Can he uh, recall the accident? Can't recall anything just yet, but the police are on to it. Oh, good. I'm sure they'll soon find your name, and then everything will come flooding back. Right. Hello there. I'm Dr Wetherill. 
Hugh Hurst. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I've been a damn fool. Uh, no, leave it. I need to look at it first. It's losing a lot of blood. Yes, I can see that, but uh, we can't afford to rush this, can we? Look, Doctor, I don't mean to be rude, but we really do need to get him into hospital. Yes, I'm aware of that, but we need to get him in alive, don't we? Which means doing whatever we can on the spot before we move him, right? You have to bear with me, I'm afraid, Mr. Hurst. Uh, uh, the pint for Ken, please, Ray. So, uh, what brings you here at this time of day, then? Paint. Subject close to me heart. You want to elaborate, then? Well, I seem to remember you promising to redecorate my house. How long ago was it? Two years? Three? I know, but I only said I'd do it if you get cheap materials, didn't I? Well, I found them. But I want you to come and have a look at them first. What for? Because I've not only found enough to spruce my house up, but there's enough there to repaint the entire hospital, which you'll also be doing shortly. You mean I've got the contract? Well, it goes without saying. <laughs> Tell me more, mate. Cheers. Right, now, Mr Hurst, we need a chisel so that we can get this bit of glass out in, in one piece. Do you have one, by any chance? Uh, there's a toolbox in the shed down there. Right, great. Could you go and fetch that for me? I'll finish this off for you. Are you sure all this is necessary? <laughs> yes, I'm absolutely positive. I was cutting a dead branch out of the tree there. You're a bit of a king gardener, are you? No, I was just trying to get this place into shape. I used to live in London. I just retired up here. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, I'm beginning to wonder. Right, thank you. Now, can you come round here and hold these pads in place gently but very firmly? Right, I'm just going to in here. Okay, no, Q, please, you need to keep still, okay? Right. Good. Okay. Right, let's get him in the ambulance. Good news. We know who you are. The police have just telephoned. They've traced your car registration. Your name is Philip Milburn. Ring any bells? Uh, no. Not really. None at all. Your wife was very upset when we told her what had happened to you. My wife? You don't remember having a wife. Her name's Rachel. The two of you live up at Ranby Moor. Look, I'm sure it'll all become a lot clearer once she gets here. Well, she's coming to see me. She's on her way now. Who's your GP, Hugh? I, I haven't got one yet. I've only just moved up here from London. Right, it would be helpful to know your medical history. Any underlying problems? Oh, my ticker's not all it should be. Uh, I've got angina. Right, well, OK, at least we know. So, listen, Hugh, um, I'm going to have to operate to remove the glass now. All right. Well, you, you mean you're going to do it yourself? D Dr Weatherill is extremely skilled at this sort of thing. Oh, no, no, uh, not complaining. If she's half as good with a scalpel as she is with a chisel, I'm delighted. Thank you. What is it? What's wrong with him? Mr Wade, just calm down. You send my son away saying there's next to nothing wrong and then he collapses. There's no need to raise your voice, Mr Wade. It's not good enough. To me or to Dr Omerod. Follow me, please. you'd like to ask for information in a reasonable tone of voice. What's wrong with him? Simon was hyperventilating badly, Mr Wayne. Now, he may have asthma or he may not, but I need for him to stay in a little while so I can get to the bottom of the problem. I think that's quite clear, isn't it, Mr Wade? Yes. Good. Now, shall we? Simon is perfectly stable. It's clear he's in good hands. I think it's best if you go now, Mr. Waite. You're welcome to return during visiting hours. I'll see you later, son. I just came on. Just couldn't get a proper breath. Well, did you have any other symptoms? Um, yeah. Pins and needles in my face and uh, everything looked sort of far away. 
Mm. Yep, well, that'll fix it. So, how do you breathe into a paper bag help that? Okay. Quick chemistry lesson. Now, you were breathing through that paper bag, right? Taking in oxygen that you needed. That's because the oxygen molecules are so small they pass right through the paper. However, the carbon dioxide you were breathing out couldn't pass through the paper bag because the molecules were too big. So I'd be getting just the right mixture of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Brilliant. So what now? We're going to get that chest x-ray done. Thank you, Doctor. Mr Milburn, here's your wife to see you. Hello, Rachel. How are you? Uh, I'm a bit shaken up still. Good. Right. Well, I'll leave you to it. The more you chat, the more it'll help. Don't stay too long, though. We don't want him to overdo it. Where's Mr Ventress gone? On the toilet, I think. You're not doing anything in there you shouldn't be, I hope. Certainly not, sister. Good. Or you'll catch the sharp edge of my tongue. That'll be a novelty. Tell me the truth. I am Rachel. I don't believe you. Ah, Mrs Milburn, I presume. That's right. You must be very relieved to see your husband in one piece. Yes, indeed. Has it all started to come back? The flushes. Ah, oh, good. Uh, look, uh, I don't want to intrude. I'm uh, sure you've got a lot to talk about. No. No, I've been told not to tire him. I'm just on my way. I'll see you later. Goodbye, Rachel. Well, David, I have to say you've done us proud, really. Well done. Well, someone has. Oh, I see. You know, Rachel would have a heart attack if she knew this kind of thing was going on. <laughs> what kind of thing? Hmm. Drinking, debauchery. I haven't seen any debauchery. I should think not, Lizzie. I should think not indeed. Your poor husband away laying gas pipelines. I'm sure I'd like it to stay that way, wouldn't it? Maybe. <laughs> oh, Gordon, you made it. Well, of course I made it. I'm not going to let you lot have all the fun, am I? Caroline, I like that. <laughs> Actually managed to get a babysitter. So, you were looking at a free man. For once in my life, I am totally free. And so, to celebrate, bottle opener, please, Dr. Sheridan. Care for some company? Yes, indeed, Matron. Come in. I have just found a particularly fine 1934 cognac in the safe. I think it's definitely time that it was opened. For goodness sake! Someone's enjoying themselves. <laughs> She's not the only one. Oh, yeah? We'll have to do this more regularly. As often as he like. Would you like to dance? I'd love to. <laughs> uh, your babysitter's just run the hospital. Your little one's just been sick. She's in a right panic. Wants you to come home. You're joking. Sorry, Dr. Omerod. I'm not as sorry as I am. Oh, what a shame. Look, I'm going to have to walk home. Caroline's got the car. Oh, no, come on, we'll give you a lift. No, 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 no. I don't want to drag you away. I'm ready to be dragged, really. This really is very good. 
If we're going to drown our sorrows, we might as well do it in style. I still can't believe the place is closing. Nor I. I somehow feel I've let my family down. This hospital's been a lifetime's work for you. For you too. And it's your home. Oh, I can find somewhere else to live. And another job. Who knows? What have you decided about telling the staff? Our lords and masters want a meeting tomorrow. Oh. More brandy? No, thanks. I'll be off. I'll say good night then. Aren't you finishing too? Uh, no, 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 I can't. The authority want the handover completed as soon as possible. Well, don't stay too late. I won't. Good night. Good night, Matron. So, uh, do you want me to see you home? It's not very far. Uh, no, it's not, but uh, I hear the white slave trade is endemic in this part of Elsenby. Mm, good job I met you then, didn't it? I couldn't agree more, so. Well, I suppose um, this is where we say goodnight. I suppose it is. It's been lovely. It has. You know, I could uh, come up for a nightcap. Well... <laughs> On the other hand, it is very late. Yes, very late. Night. Night, Susan. Night, Susan. I'll see you in the morning. Stay there and I'll phone a taxi for you. No, no, no. It's all right, I'm going. Lizzie? I'm going. Lizzie? I'm gone. chest is absolutely fine today. I feel much better. Good. That's good. Now, we've had a look at your chest x-ray, and that's come up clear. So I had asthma? No. No, you haven't. But I want you to stay in for a bit, Simon, till we sort this problem out. All right? OK. Good man. Mr Hurst, I gather you want to speak to me. Yes, indeed. What's the problem? Well, there's no problem, Mr Middleditch. On the contrary, I just wanted to say how grateful I am for my treatment here. 
Go. Oh, I see. Generally, when patients want to see me, it's in order to make a complaint. Well, not in my case. I couldn't have been better looked after. Well, that's largely down to Dr. Wetherill. Oh, you must all take some credit. Look, uh, this hospital may appear to be somewhat quaint and old-fashioned, but your staff is terrific, really caring. Oh, thank you. And long may you continue to serve your community. Sister Bridget has mentioned that you were a solicitor. Yes, that's right. I wonder if you'd care to look over a document and give me some advice. Oh, with pleasure. Honestly, Dad, I've typed the letter. As in, uh, dear Mr. Duggins, I am pleased to inform you that your tender for the redecoration of St. Aidan's has been accepted. Yes, virtually word for word. So, uh, Brian has definitely got the contract. I told the letter into Mr. Middleton to sign last week. All right, all right, keep your hair on. The Royal. Just wanted to make sure. Hey. Somebody got out the wrong side of bed this morning. Question is, which bed? Eh? Hey? Well, there was a party at Nurse's Home last night, and she was seen coming out of Dr. Gerriton's flat this morning. What name is it? Are well, you suggesting my Lizzie and Dr. Cheriton? No, I'm not suggesting really. anything. Yeah. She's my daughter. <laughs> and she's a married woman. There's no need to shout, madam. Morning, Cheriton. Mr. Rose. How was it last night? Oh, yes, jolly good. You look terrible. Oh, I didn't sleep too well. Better get that hangover cured. You're anaesthetizing for me later on. I generally find a whiff of pure oxygen helps. Better not to let me see you do it, though. Oh, Mr. Rose, what did you mean yesterday about me not being in the nurse's home for long? This place is closing. What? Common knowledge at Ashford General. Thank you. Simon, isn't it? Yeah. Dr. Ulmer has been telling me all about you. How are you feeling? Better. Good. Is your dad coming in to see you later? I expect. Oh, he's always getting at me. Why is he like that, do you think? I don't know. Never used to be when Mum was around. What was your Mum's name? Shirley. She got cancer two years ago. It was horrible. For all of you, I should imagine. He had never mentions her. If I do, he gets angry. So there's no point whinging and moping. We just have to get on with things. I really miss her. Do you know what, Simon? I think that maybe this is behind your breathing problems, you know? You yeah, only feel anxious when Dad's around. Yeah, well, maybe that's what we need to have a look at. Yeah? Doctor, I phoned the Rambimo practice, like you said. Sorry? About Philip Milburn, the patient who'd forgotten his name. Oh, good. But it's only courtesy, really, to let Dr. Gilbert know he's here. Yeah, only he isn't. What? He isn't Philip Milburn. Dr. Gilbert said he couldn't be, because he knows for a fact the real Philip Milburn is in Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf? Yeah, he's in textiles, apparently. He's setting up an outlet in Germany. Textiles? Yeah. Oh, I'm getting a headache. Oh, I've already got one. Oh, um, Doctor, hmm? about last night... What about it? Well, I just wanted to say sorry about how I ended up. Oh, that's all right, Lizzie. And uh, to ask... I didn't do anything I might regret, did I? Only I'm a married woman. No, Lizzie, you didn't. And neither did I. <laughs> I've just been speaking to Simon Waite. Oh, yes? Did you know that his mother died two years ago? She was one of Dr. Orway's patients, so I've just phoned Dr. Orway. And he said that Simon and his mum were very close. Well, that's more than can be said for him and his dad. No, so I gathered so. I wondered if... Well, I wondered if that might be part of the problem. How do you mean? Well, I wondered if Simon's over-breathing might be some sort of response to anxiety about his dad. Uh, yeah. You may be right. Thanks. I'll ask Don.
Right. Now, the secret of bunion removal, Cheriton, is to go in hard. Get right down into the bone. Look. Look how hard I've gone in there, man. See? Hmm? See? What's the matter? Is it feeling a bit queasy, are we? Well, I won't do it at all. Will it, girls? So, how much? Fifty? Oh, uh, hundred. <laughs> Seventy-five. Ninety. Eighty quid, and that's my last offer. All right, all right, done. I'll sort it out with you next time I see you, eh? No, 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 you'll sort it out now, please. <sighs> you. You all right? Yeah, yeah, you just got a small family matter to deal with. What's up? Mind your own. Most profitable day's work you'll ever do. I'll catch you in the pub. Right. Another 80 quid for the immediate care fund. Thank you. Right. Well, that's that full. I'll take that long to Middle Ditch now. Hey, Ken, have you heard rumours? Only from you. It's all right. I'm going to have a word with Lizzie, father to daughter. I just. Just need to pick the right moment. No, I don't mean about Lizzie. I mean about hospital. What about hospital? It's closing. Don't be daft. Honestly, words going around like wildfire. Alan, if this place were closing, I would be the first one to know. No, no, it's definite. Mr. Rose said so. Apparently, everyone at Ashford Lee General knows. Ventress. Oh, they've taken him for a bath, I believe. No, no, it's you I came to see, actually, in your uh, professional capacity. Oh, yes. The thing is, Mr. Milburn here, well, he doesn't appear to be Mr. Milburn. Yeah. It's funny you should say that. Oh? But I've come to that conclusion myself. Y you had? And I think Mrs. Milburn is quite positive it isn't Mr. Milburn. Now I'm confused. Well, I suggest you tell me what you found out, and then I'll take it from there. Only too happy. I've decided to take you out of here. What? We'll find another doctor, a better hospital. I like these doctors. I'm telling you, I want you out of here. You were right. What do you mean? It is you. It is your fault. You're impossible. That's why I keep getting sick. Who said that? Doctors, they said it's all mental. How dare they? Where is he? Where's he? <coughs> right, you get dressed. I'll see you in a minute. Lizzie, I need to have a word with you. What about? Well, you're not going to like this. But as your father. Have you got any idea what this is all about? Look, all doctors summoned to a meeting by Mr. Middleditch this afternoon at the request of the District Health Authority. Gordon, do you know what this is about? First I've heard of it. All right! Ah, Mr. Wade, I was hoping to catch you. Same here, pal. How dare you insult us? What do you mean, insult you? Telling my child there's mental illness in the family. No, just wait a second. I've got a position in this community that people know me. They respect me. And I respect you too, Mr. You're a liar. I'll have you up for slander. I'll sue you. But just come. Now, you damn well apologise or else... No, no, no. Now, do you want to have a sensible conversation? I've got nothing to say to you. Or any of you. I'm going to find someone who can look after my son properly. This place ought to be shut down. Well, I really think we've been treating the wrong patient. I see. No, thanks, Phil. That's very helpful. Oh, it's, uh, it's throbbing a bit, but I'm bearing up. <laughs> you can bring me a bunch of grapes. Mr Ventris? How are we, Mr. Ventris? Oh, fine, thank you. It was a real beauty. One of the biggest I've ever excised. Really? Any pain at all? Oh, nothing that I can't live with. Well, let's take a look then, shall we? 
Really, there's no need as far as I'm concerned. Come on, ma'am, I want to see my handiwork. Oh, bless us and save us. Sister, the bed seems to be on fire. Oh, Mr. Ventress. Never mind, easily dealt with. Oh, you silly man. Equally, one might say this is what happens when you ban smoking. Mr. Waite. We've got nothing to say to you. Listen, I realise that you're upset. You're too right, I'm upset. Saying we've got mental problems, poisoning my child against That's me. That's really not what we're trying to do. No, oh, no. Look, can we just, can we talk about it, please? Just the two of us. We really, really want to help. Nobody's criticising you, you know, Don. You and Simon have clearly done your very best since your wife died. Oh, don't patronise us. I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. You've no idea what it's been like for us. Absolute hell. I knew when she died it would be hard, but I tried. For Simon's sake, I had to. I think you've probably done better than you think you have, you know. <laughs> oh, how can you say that? He hates me. Oh, I don't think that's true. All I've tried to do is make him grow up properly, turn him into the kind of young man that Shirley would have wanted. Bold, confident. I promised her that's what I'd do and look how it's turned out. I've lost both of them and there's no point carrying on really, is there? You may never fully get over your wife's death, either of you, but in time, you will come to accept it, you know, and you will be happy again. No, 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 not me. No, not now, not yet, maybe, but in time. It's so hard. I know it is, but you will find a way, I know you will. And we can help you. Cheriton. Okay. Uh, sorry about this, but uh, I'd like to have a word with you. Sure, what about? Well, the thing is... Cheriton, it's... your lights are up. We need it on faucet. Sorry, Ken. I'll have to wait. Uh... Dad, you all right? No, no, I'm not all right, actually. For one, the hospital's closing. Well, that's just a rumour. Yeah, well, it's more than a rumour as far as I've heard. And two, I've taken 80 quid off Brian on false pretenses. I've no way of getting it back. And three... Three what? I understand you spent the night at the nurse's home. Who told you that? It's all around the hospital. Well, yeah, I did. Got a bit drunk. Ended up in Dr Cheriton's flat. And? And what? Lizzie, you're a married woman. Nothing happened. He behaved like a complete gentleman. He let me sleep on his bed while he slept on the sofa. Oh, I see. Any more rumours you want to discuss? No. I'm sick of rumours. Ah, is uh, Mrs Milburn coming in this afternoon? I expect so. And what about Mr Milburn? What do you mean? Oh, Mr Milburn? I don't think so. According to my information, he's in Germany. He's been there on business for two months. You don't know what you're talking about. Isn't it about time that you admitted who you really are? You're not thinking of doing a bunk. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Now we've got a chase on our hands. Son. What's happened, Dad? Uh, what's happened is that Dr Wetherill talked and, uh, for once, I, uh, I actually listened. I've, um... I've not been handling things too well. She says there's a lady psychiatrist comes to the hospital once a week, can help. I see. I think of a few things to learn. 
do you, how do you mean? About being a dad. You're brilliant, Dad. It's just... I know, I know. I've been pushing you too hard in directions you don't want to take. I love you. I know. I've just got to start finding a different way to show it, huh? We start again. Of course. You can't run away any more than I can. What's your real name? It wouldn't be Patrick Wilson by any chance, released from Armory six weeks ago from serving two years for blackmail and deception. How do you know that? Well, I'm a police officer. You made a habit of preying on vulnerable women, seducing them and blackmailing them. Not a very pleasant way to make a living. I just met her, fell for her. I haven't blackmailed Rachel. Yet. She's in love with me. I haven't taken anything off her she hasn't wanted to give. And I found out Rosman was coming back at the weekend. So you scarpered with his car without telling her. And she's so terrified that he's going to find something out that she's going along with this charade that you're him. Or have I got it wrong? I'll make you an offer. If I make this official, the only person that will suffer is Rachel. I want you to inform the police, using your real name, that you stole the car. I could get sent back to jail. Well, that's a risk you'll have to take. But uh, stealing a car is a much lesser offence than blackmail. Mrs. Milburn, Philip here has a problem he wants to discuss with you. Only you don't have long to decide. Oh, hi. Just off to this meeting, Middle, which is called. I see. Have you heard the rumours? Yes. And I think you might have given me an explanation. What? About Lizzie spending the night in your flat? Well, yes, she did. She got drunk and fell asleep. I see. Well, I could hardly tip her out, could I? No, no, of course you couldn't. You ready for the meeting, Doctor? Yes, of course, Major. Look, I've got to go. Can we talk about this later? We've uh, had that conversation. Ah. He's going to do as you suggested. Good. I'm very grateful. Oh, that's all right, love. You've suffered enough already. He's broken up enough marriages. With any luck, you won't see him again. What are you doing? Never you mind. That meeting's the doctors only. Good afternoon, all. I won't beat about the bush. Some of you may have heard rumours about the future of this hospital. Mr. Harper here from the DHA would like to make an announcement. <clears throat> A recent inspection by myself and other officials from the Health Authority found this hospital to be inefficient in many respects. In the light of this, the DHA has decided that a process of rationalisation should occur. Rationalisation? The hospital is to close. All services to be transferred to Ashfordley General. Any questions? Yes, I have one. Mr Middleditch, you've already discussed this with my superiors. There have been further developments. Developments? Mm -hmm. Mr Hurst here will explain. But this man is a patient. A very grateful patient, too. I am also a solicitor, Mr Harper. Earlier today, Mr Middleditch asked me to have a look at the title deeds of this building. It seems that when the Health Authority took over the building from the Middleditch family, a clause was included stating that if it should ever cease to be a hospital, title would revert back to the family. What? So that if the DHA ever wanted to sell the building to a developer or a hotelier, they wouldn't be able to. This can't be right. I think you'll find that it is, sir. I shall have to consult my superiors. I already have. And I think you'll find that this place is likely to remain a hospital for many years to come. Come in. Hey, uh, Hello. 
Fancy drink? Why not, eh? Thanks for sorting Don and Simon out. Oh, it's all right. It didn't take that much doing, really. He probably couldn't hit a woman, could he? Now, that is just false majesty. Oh, do you think? Mm, yeah, I know. There's a lot more to it than that. I just wish you could spin your magic on me. I'm sure it'll get better, you know. Well, for the life of me, I can't imagine how. Except, uh... Except what? I'm really fond of you, Jill. I'm really fond of you, Gordon. No. I mean, I'm really fond. Such a good idea, do you? No. I better go. Yeah. Jill, um... I'll um I'll see you tomorrow, Gordon, okay? Look, when I came back in after saying goodnight, I found Lizzie in a world of her own. Even more than usual. She was pretty much unconscious. So, what did you do? Well, what could I do? I left her in my bed for a very uncomfortable night on the sofa. What is it? It's all I've got. It's fine. So, am I forgiven? If anyone needs forgiving, it's me. It's just there were so many rumours going around the nurses. Listen. If I wanted someone to spend the night here, you know damn well it wouldn't have been Lizzie. Oh, yeah? So who would you have wanted? Let me think about that one. Tags. Make one out for each member of staff, first name, last name, then we'll all know who we are. I know that already. Mr. Greengrass, are you back again? No. I'm not a member of Ransom Twin Brother. I don't see how I can do my job. I'd like to offer my resignation. It's an emergency. Barraby Bridge. A coach has crashed. Mm -hmm.